Hello, my name is Chris Kiak, and in this video today, we're going to showcase how to create a shipper from this metal building here within Tecla Structures. I'm going to do this using the Tecla Report Template Editor. We'll go up to the Drawings and Reports menu here at the top of Tecla, and the very first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that numbering is up to date. So I'm going to just do Numbering Modified. Then I'll go to the Reports menu here, and I'm going to find my xshipper.out report file um, and this template, which is actually in the MBS Firm folder that we give you when you get started with uh, Tecla Structures and MBS Slide Rule. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and say Create From All. That will run a report of the entire building. Now, on large buildings, it might take a few seconds for it to run because it's essentially outputting a lot of rows into separate groups, just like we see here. But you'll see that this matches the comma delimited file that MBS actually creates um, directly from within itself when you're doing design and detailing. And here it represents each of the different tab pages in your Excel spreadsheet. And it's just a comma delimited file. And so now if we scroll down, we can see everything in here all the way down to accessories as well as fasteners here, including bolts, nuts, and washers and screws. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And then we're done with this. And then we'll go to MBS down here at the lower right. And I'm going to press the X key on my keyboard to go to these utilities. We'll go to the Excel shipper here and then we'll press run. And when I do that, it's going to open up the Excel template. And by default, it wants to browse to the uh, shipper.out file inside of your MBS job. But we want to go grab the one that we generated from Tecla Structures. So I'm going to go to the model folder. I'll then go to the reports subfolder inside of this current Tecla model folder. And then there's the xshipper.out text file that we just created using the reports. So I'll go ahead and say open. You'll see here that it scans through that comma delimited file. And then it just appropriately copies everything into the right cells and on each of the appropriate tab pages. And if there is something missing or like a certain type of assembly that's not in the model, then it'll just skip over that. So if I didn't have any opening framing, then the opening framing tab wouldn't be created. And then same thing if I didn't have any accessories. So I actually went through and I did start putting in some tape as well as our uh, enclosures on some of our panels. And you'll see here that something I sort of did different with the tape um, is that I actually added up all the lineal footage. So rather than getting separate piece marks of every single strip of tape uh, for panels and stuff like that inside of the model, I actually combined all those rows and I just get a lineal footage of a certain profile type of the tape. And so you can tweak the rules and things however you want to in order to get some of the output that you're looking for. Now on fasteners, fasteners in Tecla are a little bit different than how they are in MBS in the sense that um, I'm going to actually report out the bolts, nuts, and any washers um, that are actually included with those bolt assemblies in the model. I'll report those out as separate line items versus it kind of being a bolt assembly with a certain number here that I would put in the part column. And so things are just a little bit different uh, because of how Tecla is set up compared to MBS. But otherwise, you're getting very close to exactly what you're used to seeing in MBS, and you're getting it here directly from the Tecla model. Okay, now the first thing that's really important when you run this for your own company and on your own jobs is that your shipper setup file is probably different than mine. And so the example uh, template editor report needs to be modified to your specific setup. Now, if I come in here to my MBS job, there's the xshipper.out. If I just double click on this and open it with Notepad, you see the resultant text file that I basically duplicated. So at a bare minimum, if you don't really know how your shipper's been set up or if you haven't modified anything in any way um, from what you got out of the box from MBS or from what they initially implemented with you, you can open this up and you can actually look at the number of characters between each of the commas here. And you can count up those characters and then you can make sure that the Tecla template editor report matches that spacing in that setup. You also want to make sure that your um, basically your tab page names are also correct here exactly as shown. Now the one thing that I have not done in my implementation of the uh, shipper report is I'm not putting these color definitions like this these keys for what RO means etc for like red oxide. I didn't do these. Um, in fact I got to kind of think about how I would do these using the Tecla template editor but all the main content rows up here are all good. Now you also notice that there needs to be a space here between each of the major categories. So uh, you know a, a line character here that separates each of these different tab pages or groups. So this is the output and you can kind of reverse engineer that output and get the Tecla template editor to match that. 
or if you actually go into C, MBS, and then uh, your rep folder here, you'll see that uh, for reports, you'll see that there's actually some setup files and there's a ship.frm um, and then there's also this xshipper.frm. So if we actually open that, this is the definition file that tells um, uh, MBS exactly how this needs to be output. And then here you see the different flag markers for um, different value fields for what MBS will put in to each of those respective columns. And then you'll see where MBS is expecting that specific uh, number of characters between the commas is uh, being expected. And so if you need to increase the number of uh, you know, spaces here or add new fields, then you can. And a lot of people do customize this to their specific company and what they want and what they need. So if you've customized this, then you need to take this same format and you need to modify the Tecla template editor that I'm going to show you next in order to match that. Because if you just ran my uh, default report that I've built in Tecla, and this is completely different and set up for your MBS, this uh, .frm file, if this is completely different, then um, you know MBS is going to, the utility for creating the Excel spreadsheet is going to choke because it's going to say, hey, you're... Um, I'm not seeing matching data fields or tab page names and things like that. So again, you want to make sure that you study this, see what you've customized, and then you're going to make the Tecla Temple Editor match that in order for everything to run correctly. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual report template itself here within Tecla Structures. We'll go to the Tecla menu, we'll then go to Editors, and then there's the Temple Editor. Once the template editor is open, we'll go to the open icon here and we will go to our MBS firm folder. And inside of that, we will see that there's the xshipper.out.rpt file. And that uh, RPT is just the standard uh, file extension for Tecla template editor reports. We're going to go ahead and select that and press OK. And now we can see all of the rows and value fields for this template. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. If we look at the tree view on the left, we're gonna see that there's these parent row names which are matching exactly the different tab pages that you have set up in your Excel shipper. Now, the structure and format of how this works is there's a parent part row, then there's a child part row here which uh, scans all of the parts that match a filtering rule in the parent row. And then there's uh, the different value fields here and as I highlight each of these, you'll see it highlights it visually in the report editor. Now at the very bottom, there's a summary row, and really the only purpose of this is so that way we can get a spacer um, between each of the major categories because that's what the shipper utility in MBS is looking for. It's looking for a separation be between all the items on one tab page to another. So that's the only reason why we have the sum summary row here. Now let's first take a look at the parent row here called rafters and columns. If I double click on that, that will open up the properties here. You'll see that the content type or the object type that I'm reporting in this row is parts. And you can see all the other different object types in Tecla that you can report against. Now, what we're doing is on when we look at parts, we're actually doing some filtering here with a formula. So if I press the advanced button here at the lower right, we can open up the formula. And you can edit and modify this as required. Now, you do need to be careful and look at the parentheses here. So there is a formula here that says if the, this part is main part, which equals one if it was a submaterial, it would be zero. So there's only one main part as, per assembly, which is good because we only want to output one instance of each assembly. So if this is the main part of an assembly, that's great. We'll get one part. And then the, the next rule here, we have this and and. So if the main part is true and then all of these name checks in here inside of parentheses, I'm basically using this match function here to check whatever the assembly name is. And I'm using this uh, rafter with a asterisk at the beginning and the end, which is a wild card. And really the way that this function works, if you simply just copy and paste this and change the, the name in here, all I'm doing is I'm checking that is this part that has been scanned in the, the output with the Tecla report uh, template editor, is this part that it fetched from the model, does its assembly name contain rafter, column, or beam? If any of those three are true, because this is an or statement here, so inside the parentheses, all these name checks are, uh, is this or this or this true, and up here the double the double and symbols here is basically just checking whether this is a main part and if any of these names are equal to rafter, column, or beam. 
So you might want to study that a little bit, just kind of look at the syntax there. But really, this is the magic. Like this is what I'm copying and pasting to each major row, and I'm just tweaking this as required. And so if any uh, assembly name is rafter, column, or beam, it's going to be output in this category and in this tab page. So that's how the formulas work on the parent row. Then you'll see here that there's this part inner row, which is a child. It's lower down in the hierarchy underneath rafters and columns. Okay. And so really, this is also a part row. And I'm just checking if it's main part. This is just an extra precaution here, but I should be okay. But really what I'm doing here is that it's only outputting any parts that match the master filter on the parent row. So now this is where I'm actually just going through and I'm outputting, for instance, the quantity of those objects and it's summarizing those. So it gives me the total uh, quantity of all of the same um, you know, columns and rafters and beams that have the same piece mark. So the way that that works is this summarizes across rows here on the right. But then how do I tell it what fields on this row make it a different quantity from another? Well, here on each of the value fields, this is the uh, shipping mark or the piece mark. Here, if you set the sorting order to ascending or descending, something other than none, then that tells Tecla that it needs to look at the uh, output value of that particular value field, and it needs to make sure that it doesn't make uh, combined rows or quantities for any uh, parts that have different values for the assembly mark, the assembly name, or even here on profile, I've also set this to ascending. Now, if something does not have a sorting order, then Tecla will not evaluate that in comparing whether or not it should combine two rows and increment the quantity here or not. Now, I got a little bit deeper into that than I wanted to, but I just wanted you to kind of understand some of the underlying logic of how these work and how they separate quantities. Now here, this is actually just a fixed uh, line of text, which is representative of the tab page reference that you have over in your MBS setup. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, et cetera. And then again, I have my uh, Excel tab page headers, which this has to match exactly what you have in your MBS setup for the MBS utility to recognize this and see that it works. Now, let me just show you something. Like, let's say that I wanted to create a new uh, row here. Um, what I can do is I can actually just copy the entire top level row. And then if you just say paste, then you can kind of pick where do you want this to be. So let's say I want this to be right after columns and rafters. So I'm gonna say okay, and then now I've got that, uh, you know, this row got put in here, but notice that when you paste, sometimes things gets a little bit in the wrong spot. So like this got nested underneath the opening framing row and I don't want that. So I can always uh, come up here and say, shift row up a level. So that brings it up in the hierarchy. So now notice that it's right here after opening framing. But now I want to physically move it up so that way it's right after the first one. Well, now I can just double click on this. I can change this name to whatever that tab page needs to be. I can change the formulas in here for whatever parts that it's trying to filter. And then what I can also do is then just come in here and change the tab page number. If that's two or five or 10 or 11 or whatever it is, modify that and then modify the text here for the tab page name. And that's essentially how you copy and paste um, one row or one set of rows so that way you have a starting point to modify your next tab page that I may not have here out of the box in my uh, example report. So I don't want this in here, so I'm gonna actually just uh, delete this out. So I'll just say cut, and now I'm back to how I had my report before. Now that shows you essentially like how the structure of the part rows work. But let's talk about the accessories row, which is kind of like my leftovers and catch-all row. Um, and then also let's talk about the bolts, just to make sure you understand how that works. All right, so if I double click on the accessories row, you're gonna see that there are a lot of filters here in the formula. So if I go to advanced, you're gonna see that basically it's very similar in format, except for instead of having ors, we have and and here. And uh, we also have not equal to true instead of equals to true. So what did I do here? I basically took every single one of the filters from the above rows and the formulas and the rules that I used to filter equal to true for those rows above, and I put them here. So the whole concept is that if this is a part and none of these criteria are true, if it's not equal to any of these names or uh, if it's not an angle it's, and it's not concrete, 
if all of these conditions are true, where it's not one of these things, then it's basically going to output this. So this is like the leftovers. So if you create any new rules above and add additional filter names and, and filter rules and things like that in your rows above, you wanna copy those filters in here and paste them, and you're basically doing the anti of what you have in your above rules. So instead of equals equals true and an or statement, it's basically saying that, hey, I wanna make sure that this part that is on the accessories row is not equal to true to any of these, because if it was, then that should have been output already in one of the above rows. So this is kind of like the um, does not equal to and is the leftover row. All right, so that shows you at the high level there. And then a couple extra things that we did here just to show some examples is say for instance on tape, you'll see that I've got this inner row here called uh, part inner tape or sealant. And then I have a um, all other accessories row. And these are both children rows underneath the accessories parent row. Well, the whole idea here is that you'll notice that on the tape, there's a lineal footage tag and there's no quantity and there's um, no uh, assembly mark. And so the idea behind this is that I'm actually just getting like a total quantity of tape that it adds up here inside the model. So over here on the right, if I look at my length value field, you'll see that I'm summarizing the values across all rows, which is just adding up all the length with the same profile type. So same thickness and width tape or whatever, or whatever the callout is. And so how did I filter out tape versus other parts? Well, here on the row itself, I just am looking in the formula for any assembly name that uh, contains tape or seal for sealant, okay? And you can tweak and modify those as modify those as required. And if you don't like uh, to do lineal footage and you want separate quantities for all the tape pieces that it found, then you can do that. Or you can even get um, a little bit fancy and you could actually divide this out. So you could probably take the length and divide it by 25 foot. Um, to come up with like a certain quantity and things like that. So you can get pretty, pretty, um, you know, kind of robust with different types of styles of things that you can do with the rows. Now that explains accessories. Now let's go ahead and take a look at fasteners or bolts. Now underneath the fasteners group, if I go over here to the left, we're going to see that there is a bolt child row washer one, two, and three, and then there's nut one and two. And the reason why there are so many uh, sub rows of nuts and washers is because that matches and is representative of the bolt assembly selection in the model. So if I go over here and I double click on these screws, for instance, we'll see here that over on the right hand side that there are the different checkboxes. Well, there's the bolt itself, then there's washer one, washer two, and washer uh, three. So washer one and usually washer three are usually the same washer on structural bolts, like a hardened or plain washer. And then this washer two is often a bevel washer if that's ever turned on. And then there's nut one and nut two. So that's why you have these separate rows over in the template editor because that will output each of those respective numbers. Now, if there is no nut and washer, then it just won't output that. So screws don't have a nut and washer set, and then many times A307 bolts don't have any uh, washer set. So you're gonna see in most cases that it's a lot of bolts, uh, screws, and the nuts, and not very many washers. But if you did have two washers, for instance, on there, um, or three washers that were applied to the bolts, then the Tecla is going to output all those quantities because it's reading from each of those appropriate rows. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of how this template works. And in most cases, I usually set this up for clients. So when we're doing our implementation, they'll show me the MBS setup that they've got for their shipper report. And then we'll kind of walk through and make sure that all I know what all the different fields mean. And then what I'll do is I'll start to modify or tweak this report to accommodate their specific needs. But this also gives you a good clue in that if you need to tweak or modify things yourself, you can understand how the structure works, how to copy and paste an existing uh, group or tab page and make a new one. And then you can come in here and tweak some of the value fields as required to meet the specific setup that you have with MBS. For additional training and setup and configuration of MBS slide rule with Tecla structures, please reach out to me at my contact information shown and I'd be glad to help.